airing everything out. Everything is soaking wet. We had over 10 inches of water. That's about it. A few more inches. So this thing was underwater. I never liked where the electrical panel was because in the event of a flooding emergency, that's about the first thing that gets hit. So God forbid we were out in the water and we started flooding. Now we're flooding in the dark with no power and the bilge pump goes. It needs to be rewired. I'm not going to put it back together the way I found it because that would just be silly. I'm going to uh, modify this. So I think I'm going to move it up here. I got plenty of room to stick an electrical panel. Okay, let's take a look. What kind of mess we're dealing with here? I'll be honest, I have no idea where you can goddamn begin. All right, I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a schematic. I'm gonna make an electrical schematic of the boat. I'm gonna start with that. Okay, so I'm in the process of uh, drawing out a um, wiring diagram. So if I have things disconnected, if I find myself confused, I can always revert back to this. And I bought this book by Don Casey, which you can never go really go wrong with. Okay, so I'm uh, in the process of labeling, labeling all the wires, and um, I'm double checking them by testing the uh, continuity. Okay, that's our GPS and our GPS ground. Uh, this wire was actually just taped on. You think uh, we have enough connections to this one breaker switch? Yeah, I'm just using these uh, all purpose labels. I just peel them off and I wrap them around the wire. They're not waterproof, they're just temporary until I get the job done. We had this uh, fluorescent light tucked away up under here and it's spliced in to the galley light. You, know, you can tell what our predecessor did. Some shoddy work. That's it. A gnarly twist and some uh, electrical tape. All right, this is the light in the head, and I just want you to look at that for a second. Really, just take a good look at that. Yeah, that's why I'm worried about a lot of this stuff. I guess they decided who needs the male. The, fe the female do. The female will do just fine for both ends. In every corner I turn, it's a new surprise. Look at that. Barely hanging on by a thread. There you go. What do you think? Better? Before? After? Alright, so this is what I'm spending a decent portion of my time doing. Uh, sorry, so from the running lights, I label it running light positive breaker so I know but now I want to trace that back because I want to label it the entire way and I trace it back to here this goes to the breaker again two running lights positive breaker and now obviously one will go to the bow and one will go to the stern and I want to go I want to know which is which in case there's a problem so clear light at the stern I remove the light, I hook up alligator clips to my meter, and I will see which one goes to the stern, which one goes to the bow, and nothing, and there it is. Okay, so I know the running lights where it splits here, this goes to the stern, and by default that goes to the bow, but I'm gonna actually test that anyway. Well, I went to go we'll pull apart this connection, test the uh, continuity of the running lights, and it just pulled right apart, as you can see all the patina and how corroded it is. So I pulled back about a half inch, and you can see these are pretty well-sealed connectors, but as you can see, you peel back about a half inch and look how far back that corrosion goes. The uh, salt water is just ruthless on this wiring. Uh, every terminal I find seems to be uh, just about met the end of its lifespan, the corrosion, everything's brittle. What already started off to be a relatively large electrical job and just uh, relocating the breaker panel is going to turn out to be a massive undertaking. 
All right, so I tested the wires going to the bilge pump for continuity just to identify them and I wasn't getting anything. So I traced it back to the bilge pump. So now it's either the bilge pump or the, sw or the float switch and that's the bilge pump. So I'm getting continuity there. That's the float switch and I'm not getting anything, but of course I have to lift the switch. Right here, hold on, I'm getting nothing. So I got a bad float switch. Okay, so this is the old float switch for the bilge pump. I mean, as you can see, these connections were kind of lousy. So I'm going to solder them. I'm going to solder the new ones instead of using these connectors because I don't think it's the right application for this. Okay, so I soldered it, and now I'm going to pull the first sheathing over. And I'm going to heat it up, and I'm going to pull the second sheathing over it. I think that's a lot better than the uh, alternative was the um, the originals right here. As you can see, that didn't uh, that didn't work out too well. All right, so I'm uh, wiring up my GPS right now. I cut back a couple inches to splice, and I showed you this before, corrosion. And that was just a ridiculous uh, uh, pigtail. Rat someone pigtailed it and wrapped it with electrical tape, and this corrosion moved up. I don't know if you could see it. This corrosion moved up about two inches up the sheathing, and it's brittle and it's corroded. So. At any given point, with enough corrosion, I could have just lost my GPS out there, and that would have been pretty lousy. So I'm using this new technique I just saw on YouTube, and I'll show you in a second how to do it. All right, so what he did was they just took this kind of, uh, the strands and they left it loose, and they kind of just if you can see what's going on there, just kind of intertwined them. They twist them, and then they took a bit of wire. They just I uh, wrapped it, and uh, they give a much better demonstration. Uh, the YouTube page was called uh, Flight Test, and I believe it was for um, uh, remote control airplanes. And I just wrapped it. Okay, and that's kind of what we're left with. I think it's pretty attractive looking. Actually, it's really. That's not even soldered yet, and it's it's there. It's good. That's not going anywhere. Great, great uh, flight test on YouTube, and a uh, couple of young guys, and uh, pretty sharp, pretty sharp guys. It's really just taking the solder. You can see it's just soaking up in between the strands. Doesn't uh, it takes a lot before it drips like that. Okay, so that's the finished product of uh, this kind of soldering job. I slide the sheath over. I hit it with some. Uh, I hit it with some heat, and it's beautiful. I don't know. I'm tracing these wires back, and it's pretty slack. But then again, you know, boat twists and contracts and expands and contorts, so I'm just worried about chafing and whatnot. I think I'm gonna drill a hole and then run some sheathing through and bind these together and do it properly. What do you think, a little better? So I see that he had a DC socket over here. I'm gonna remove that and all that was. Uh, that was just pigtailed, of course, and just wrapped with some electrical tape. That was practically falling off. And uh, he did have the forethought to put in a fuse, but of course it was a 30 amp fuse when I looked inside and I'll rest it away. It's not 10 gauge. Every turn I take, it's amateur hour. Okay, and this is what he had the uh, DC outlet. He had it just spliced into the water pump, the wiring going to the water pump. That's all this individual did. These are the uh, positive and negative from the water pump and he just spliced, <laughs> pulled away a little bit of the sheathing and just wrapped this around and just put some electrical tape over it. By not knowing that, uh, anyone would have plugged into that and let's say I, I did an energy audit and I said, okay, this is pulling, you know, eight amps. Uh, whatever they were plugging into that, I wouldn't have known. Would have been on top of eight amps going down the line from here. And let's say I just had this uh, fused for you know 10 amps so it's like really dangerous okay so I got rid of that ridiculous splicing and uh, and I put uh, 
three or four la the various layers of a heat shrink insulator over it. And then I'm just gonna feed it through the sheathing and I think uh, it should be just fine. There you go. Okay, a little better than before. Okay, so I'm renewing a nav light here uh, over the nav desk and I see going on the connectors and I see some electrical tape coming out and um, you know, I'm worried that Hunter did a lousy job so we're going to take a look inside. So yeah, I can't even get a good look at where they did the splice. Hunter uses this nasty gooey putty that seems to have broken down over the years. Uh, to hold their wires in place. And I've stumbled across it in a few places, so uh, I don't know exactly what that electrical tape was. Just a mounting block for uh, fuses. And I'd like to mount it here in the battery compartment, but I'll be honest, I don't really know exactly what's behind here. You know, I'm weary of just drilling holes willy-nilly to any kind of surface, so we're going to try and take a look back in there. Okay, so now I know there's not really anything back here I gotta worry about. So that's pretty cool. Who needs a, uh, a boroscope when you have an iPhone? All right, now I could uh, now I could drill through here with with confidence. Okay, so that's my little fuse block I have mounted in the uh, battery compartment. I just thought I'd have them organized and all in one spot, so if in case something goes wrong, I know exactly where to go to. It's uh, 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm still crawling around this boat, and I'll be honest, I'm getting sick and tired of this shit. 